All right, welcome to another Ultimate Game Host video tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at our exciting new web control panel, which is going to make managing the server that you buy through us all that much easier. Uh, so we'll start out on the control tab for the control panel. You can see the game type. We're going to be looking at a Gary's Mod server first. We'll do another tutorial for Counter-Strike Source a little later. You can see the IP and port that the server is running on. You can get a uh, FTP link. You can click that and go directly to the server over FTP to do some work on it and move files around if you like. There's also a launch Steam and Play Now link, which will, if you're running the default game mode, bring up uh, Gary's Mod and get you started playing. You can see what the server name is at the moment, the map that it's currently running, which needs a refresh. And we'll just refresh that. There we go. Now we're on GM Construct. I was testing it with Dark RP earlier and changed to CS Assault temporarily. And how many players are on it and what the server's doing. We can confirm all of this information by going to HLSW. Here we can see the same server, same port, and that it's up. Ten players, GM Construct, and it's up and running. And we'll do just a couple basic things here. Let's go ahead and stop the server, for instance. And yes here. We just wait for that operation to complete. It takes a few seconds. And when that's done, we can click OK here and we can confirm in HLSW the server is offline. And if we refresh here, the server is down as well. So let's go ahead and start the server back up. Let's start there. Click yes, we're sure we want to start it. And the server is being started. We give it a little bit of time. Okay, so that is all set. And now when we check in HLSW, the server is up. And if we refresh the control panel page here, the server's up. Okay, uh, a couple other buttons we can see here. There's also the restart. So if you change something via FTP and you don't want to hit stop and then start, you can hit restart and that carries through these two actions in sequence. Um, you can also patch your server as well. We allow customers, when Steam releases an update, we receive that update, but we don't apply it right away to your server. You can go on here and click the patch button and update your server to the latest version if uh, there's been a new update. Uh, you can also reinstall your server. And this, what that does is it basically wipes everything out on the server, all your configs, all your add-ons, all gone reinstalls it from scratch exactly as you ordered it originally. So if you'd made some changes to the config for the name or a different Archon password sense, you'd have to reset any of those options because they would change back to when you first ordered it. So that's a good way to help, help out if you happen to delete some files or whatnot, you can do that. Uh, moving on, and if we move over to the config tab, you can see first the command line for starting the server. So you can see what all the ports are, the maximum players, what the default map is, for instance, and what the default game modes are. Right now it's set to sandbox. And so if we want to make a simple change here, let's go ahead and change the map, the default map to flat grass. And we'll leave the checkbox checked by default for uh, restart the server. Hit apply here. And we wait while the command changes. And this, when you refresh this page, the default map list gets updated with any maps that you have. So if you've uploaded a map, you can add it to the server and have it as the default. And if we refresh on the main page now, the map should be flat grass. And HLSW should say the same. Yep. Okay. Continuing on from there. We have server configuration simple interface. So we can go ahead and change some things on here. Uh, for instance, we can rename the server to UB UGH Demo Gmod and leave off the server part. And we'll add a join password. Let's change the maximum file size for files that can be downloaded to 32. And let's leave all talk off and continue the next map in 30 minutes, for instance. We'll hit apply there and hit yes. And this is going to change the server.cfg file for this server to 
match these new parameters that we've put in. And we'll give it just a couple minutes to get that finished up. Okay. If we look, server name is now UGH demo gmod. There's a password on it. And those commands are set up properly as well. We can confirm that by opening up the server configuration advanced tab, doing a refresh, and we see exactly what these values have been set to. So all talks off, max file size 32 megabytes, just like we said. Allow downloads is one to help out with that command. And that's all set. You can also edit it here. So if we wanted to add server back to it, we can do that and hit apply and hit yes. And the server is going to restart. Okay. So that's all done. And server's back in the title of the of the server itself. Now, as far as adding maps to the server goes, you can upload maps from your computer here. It's basically click browse. It'll open a folder on your computer, just like if you were uploading to any website, YouTube, for instance. And you can click around, pick the BSP file for your map, click upload, and it will be added to your server. And then later you'll be able to go to the command line and select that map here after you hit refresh and use the map on your server. Now, we also have the Archon tab here where you can send some commands. I've been sending some back and forth here. And let's go ahead and clear that out and then I'll send something new. So let's check the net max file size that we tried to set earlier. I'll hit enter on the keyboard. And after a little bit of a delay, there's the command. And you can use any of the standard Archon commands. You don't have to type Archon in front of them or anything. And you can just manage the server this way and work with it easily in the browser window as opposed to downloading something like HLSW and going to the console tab and then typing in the same commands on here. Now the last tab here that we'll get to is uh, add-ons. And we'll go through a couple things here. There's Gary's Mod content. So you can pick and choose uh, additional games to install. These can take about five minutes each to install because of all the files that have to move around. But uh, afterwards, you know, you'll be able to spawn Counter-Strike source weapons, data defeat source models, things like that. And that'll all work for you. Okay. And you can also do some common add-ons here. I've got AskMod ready to go because that's one of the, the ones that I prefer for managing Gary's Mod server. I've put in my Steam ID. You can look at our other video tutorials for how to get your Steam ID. Or you can click this link and it'll take you to a, a page on our forums where you can learn how to get your Steam ID. I'm going to go ahead and apply that. So we'll add AskMod to the server and make me the default admin. So it's very easy to get yourself set up with Gary's Mod and get the basic things on there that you need to manage and work with your server. So we'll just wait a moment while that... Okay. So I cut the video a little bit there to get rid of the time. It was about a one or two minute thing for getting that installed. Let's go ahead and click OK and that's all done. And let's, uh, let's take a look at the SVN add-ons that we have available here. Um, Advanced Duplicator, Phoenix Storms, Wire Model, Wire Mod, these all use the SVN versions. You can check the box to update them to the latest version if you want. And uh, you can also send us a request to get more SVN add-ons to the server. SVN uh, stands for subversion. And uh, it's a good way to keep everyone having the same copy of these add-ons. Now, if you use these, you'll need, if it's something that has local content like Phoenix Storms with all the models, you'll need to download it to your local machine as well. But this is just an easy way to maintain it on the server. So for the purpose of the tutorial, we'll just do Advanced Duplicator because that one's fairly quick to get installed. The other ones move around a lot of files and take, take a bit longer, and the YouTube time limit is a little bit prohibitive for this sort of thing. So we'll go ahead and click OK. So that's done. We've got some admin plugins installed. We've got some extra Gary's Mod content we could add if we wanted to. 